Human beings are not logical, they are psychological. This is an exceedingly important principle and idea to understand and to get, particularly, of course, if you intend to deal with, work with, and especially if you intend to help other human beings, to understand that people are not logical, they're psychological. Now, what does this mean? Well, when I say human beings are not logical, they're psychological, I certainly don't mean that at no time ever can any human being be logical, rational, act in a logical, rational kind of way. I don't mean to say that human beings are completely illogical and irrational, but I am saying, first and foremost, that the employment of logic and or a process of reason, first and foremost, is volitional. It has to be chosen. It's not a given. They might be logical, they might be rational, they might not be. Of course, that leaves open the question, well, what exactly does it mean to be rational, to be logical? Because, of course, one may think that one is being logical and or rational and, in fact, do something that other people around them would correctly identify as illogical and irrational because they're, mis they're mistaken. They're mistaken about something. They've made an error. And so, in fact, their actions or their statement is illogical. It doesn't match the facts. It doesn't match reality. So there's no guarantee that a human being will be logical or rational in their life, but there is an absolute rock-solid guarantee that they will be, in effect, influenced by their psychology. That is always operative. Psychology, in effect, is always there. It's always affecting a person, influencing a person, uh, it, impacting a person's life, their decisions and whatnot. Uh, it, take a person, let's say, who has a phobia of something. Very often when somebody is, is truly afraid of something in a kind of irrational way, people try to address them on the logical level, in other words, the conscious level. They try to explain to them, there's nothing to be afraid of. See, the elevator isn't really going to hurt you or show them statistics on the, the planes and, you know, tell them how the planes are serviced and how they're subject to all kinds of regulations and whatnot. And the person ends up saying, I know, I understand all that. My fear is illogical and irrational and I still have it. In other words, the fear is not logical, it's psychological. Now, what is psychology? What do we mean by psychology here? Well, psychology is psyche logic. Psyche logic, psyche having to do with the inner life, the inner world, the mind, and the logic of the inner world is actually quite literally what psychology means. It's amazing that more psychologists don't seem to understand this. It's very rarely uh, expressed in this way, but this is exactly what psychology is and means. I mean, among other things, but this is crucial because every one of us has our own psyche logic. We have a logic which pertains to our inner life and our inner world, with, which may or may not match the outer world. This is why somebody can make a statement or can take a certain action that other people see as being crazy. But to them, it's not crazy. If you could see it from their perspective, if you could jump into their body, so to speak, it would all make perfect sense. That person who's ranting and screaming on the, the street corner, you know, we may look at this person and imagine, well, they're, they're insane, right? They're nuts. But to them, they are yelling and screaming at an actual threat, only there is no actual threat. The threat exists in their mind. Or there's, there's some other person there, there's some other entity. They might be you know, looking at a demon or an alien or something. And in their inner world, it all makes perfect sense. And if you were confronted with the same thing that they are being confronted with, you would probably yell too. But of course, from the perspective of the outside, it doesn't make any sense. But from the perspective of the inside, it's perfectly logical. So again, this is why we say it's psychological. It's a psychological issue, even though logically, in terms of the outer world, it doesn't make any sense. Now, this is absolutely crucial and critical to understand anytime you deal with human beings and anytime you wonder why does this person act the way they do? Why do they act so irrationally or so illogically? Well, the first thing to understand is that to them, probably, at least in the moment, they are not acting illogically or irrationally. They may come to see at a later time 
that they did in fact act illogically irrationally. They may have been under the influence of a drug or under the influence of alcohol and later on they come to say, oh my God, what did I do? But I guarantee you at the time in the moment, it all seemed like perfectly normal to them. It seemed, it seemed like the right thing to do. And if you think about it, isn't that kind of what a lot of life is? I mean, really everything is that way. It seemed like a good idea at the time, right? That's why you did it, because you, you, didn't, you didn't see it being anything weird or wrong or illogical, irrational at the time, even though later you may come to see it that way. If you're going to deal with human beings, if you're going to work with human beings, and especially if you're going to help human beings, you have to reach people on the level of psychology. You have to reach them on the level of their inner world. Logical explanations only go so far with a human being. And especially if we're talking about a person who, again, is, is let's say they're suffering from a phobia. The phobia may have to do with something that happened in their life when they were seven years old. They may be terrified of the airplane, and it may go back to an incident in their life which actually had nothing to do with an airplane. Or it may have only, in a general way, had something to do with an airplane. Many people who are afraid of planes and elevators and whatnot, it's actually not the plane, it's not the elevator, it's the small space, it's the enclosed space. Or it's the fear, it's the picture in their mind of walls closing in on them, or the feeling that everything is crushing down on them. It has nothing to do with reality, and they know this. This is why you can't talk them out of it, so to speak. The only way that you're going to get them to move beyond that is to reach that one point in their mind, in their subconscious, and make a, a subconscious adjustment. But you're not going to do that, usually, by giving them some kind of logical, rational, exposition about the subject. It just doesn't work. And this is why so many therapies uh, very often are not very effective. This is why a person may be in therapy for six months to work on certain fears and phobias and whatnot. And then the, the psychologist ends up saying, look, you're, you're never going to get over this. You're just going to have to learn how to manage it. Because the psychologist, unfortunately, doesn't know how to reach the subconscious. Ironically, because they have, even though they have the title of psychologist, they actually don't know how to reach a person on a psychological level. And a psychological level is, in many cases, at least in large part, it is a subconscious level. You've got to reach the inner self, the inner world, the inner mind, so to speak. That's what the subconscious is. And that's how you effect real change in a person. You don't give them logical arguments, or you can. It's just that's, that in itself is not usually going to help them very much. So keep that in mind always. Squirrels above are throwing. <laughs> they want me to get out of here. They're throwing things down. Anyway, that's what I think. Tell me what you think. Leave a comment, and I will talk to you later.